So there's the principles of light, different types of light source, how light is reflected off different surfaces, there's colour theory, there's all this technical stuff that you're supposed to learn when you want to start using colour. But one of my favourite artists when it comes to using colour is my mum Mako, and it's clear when I talk to her about using colour that she doesn't know a lot of that technical stuff about colour, so how is that possible? Well there's one principle or rule that she does stick to, that she does apply, so we're going to learn about that and we're going to learn about her thought process as she built up this figure drawing. So hi, my name's Kenzo, this is Love Life Drawing. It's not just her, I've noticed with other artists, whenever I see an artist whose use of colour I like, I say, how did you learn that? And they say, it's not that much about studying colour theory, for me it was mainly trial and error and building an intuitive sense of colour. And so that's what they have, an intuitive sense of colour that they've built up over years of experimentation and studying their favourite artists. And for them, I think it's like their native language. You know, like, with your own native language, you don't necessarily know all the grammatical rules and stuff, but you can just use it. Now, as a learning process, that's a bit too chaotic for me. I want some technical insights, some principles to study and practice and do specific exercises for and build up my skill, technical skill that way, rather than just trying all sorts of stuff, studying some artists and then organically over the years some colour skill will emerge. I want to accelerate it by studying. So there's going to be lots of technical stuff in future videos, but the reason I wanted to start here is so that we don't forget that there's another side to using colour too. Um, and so why don't we get into this drawing, talk to my mum about her thought process and also talk about this one principle that is so essential that even when she's doing this kind of free form, instinctual use of colour, she still sticks to that principle too. <laughs> okay, so what, do you, what are you doing in this first stage of the drawing? made an initial drawing with an earth green, um, very rough drawing. Uh, earth green is very useful because it doesn't interfere with the other colour. Okay, and then now in the second stage of the drawing, what's going on here? I just uh, wanted to map, mapping out shadow area and uh, in, in his figure I saw two colour in his dark side. One is deep red, the other is uh, blue. So first I pick up dark blue pastel pencil and uh, so mapped up. Yeah, so what you're doing is you're just creating simple shapes that are going to be the darker areas. Yes. And this isn't the final colour you're going to use because with soft pastel you can add new layers on top. Yeah. So you're going to be adding blue for some of it later. But the point is the shapes of where what sh what areas are light and what areas are dark. Creating simple shapes for that. That is the key. Yeah. And uh, once you've got those va the value structure the the shapes of the light and dark in place, you can actually be playful with the colors and you yeah. can exaggerate because it's not going to be obviously Anyway, let's go on to the next stage. So what are you doing in this stage? Yeah, now I want to use uh, soft pastel because I want the colour to speak more loudly because the pastel pencil is uh, good for precision but it, when it comes to power of colour, uh, stick pastel is much, much stronger. So I used um, a blue uh, soft pastel. Sorry, I don't know brand and uh, soft yellow for light, yeah. And this is like your taste, right? You like really colourful figure drawings yeah. and you want to use as much colour as you can. Yeah. That's not a good idea for everyone. And no, no. a lot of people when they're starting out with colour, they'll struggle because they use too much strongly saturated or really vivid colour. Yeah. And so you don't necessarily have to do that. But you're, you're able to do that because you keep the values roughly 
the relationships between them roughly correct. And actually, the blues that you the blue that you used is quite a bright blue. Yeah. But it's darker than this yellow that you've used. Yeah. So now it's about the relationship between yeah. different light and dark areas. <laughs> so what are you doing at this stage? Um, after putting a, a vivid color with a soft pastel, drawing became somehow kind of blown up because it always does when you put the strong color. Color wants to expand, so yeah. now we time to tighten up with the redrawing. Okay, so, so you mean like these shapes of color are a bit out of control, and they need some, they need to be contained a little bit back. So it's you doing you you drew a rough underdrawing and then you put these big explosions of color and then now you're bringing it back down to earth again that's right yeah and i picked up a sanguine it, it's like a sanguine work as a mid, mid tone i mean to, uh, very white and uh, this time i used a uh, pastel pencil and it's uh, i would call it a kind of a unifier because um, that mid-tone can unify those strong blue and the yellow contrast. So, you, unifactor. <laughs> unifactor, that's cool. Yeah. I, is that a word? <laughs> <laughs> unifactor. <laughs> so, you don't want everything to be super... Even though you've got this bright colour, vivid colour style, even you, you need something that's going to bring things back down to earth. Something that's a little bit not on the edges of the color wheel super saturated something yeah. a little bit uh, more towards the middle okay what happens in the next stage um now i i got the second color bright area i already put the soft yellow but i also see kind of a very pale uh lovely violet on his skin uh, I think you can see as well, uh, you can say pink or but I think violet. So I used the soft pastel again and uh, uh, then I went to background. Background is very important because background can make a figure comes out. So you need the same attention for background as well as the figure. Yeah. So the violet within the figure yeah. is a light area a bit like the yellow yeah but it's a cooler color yeah. and the point is that cooler than yellow i mean quieter than yellow but yeah i definitely saw two colors in his right area so when with as long as the relative again and we're saying it again but the relationships between the light areas and the dark areas and those shapes so that if you turned it into black and white, it would still make sense. And then you're being a bit more um, playful with the colors within those levels of value, within the darks and within the lights. And so in the light areas, you just felt, and it might be something that you feel, but someone else might see it slightly differently. No, that's, that's fine. That's the whole point of drawing, yeah. isn't it? Because we want to see what you see. We want to see through your eyes, right? Which is the cool one of the cool things about seeing someone's artwork. So there's the the part which is like has to be correct is the value relationships, and then beyond that, it's more about your own feeling. Exactly. I mean, some people might see green instead of blue. It all depends on artist. Yeah. So mm, you you can be very free about it and it, and how about the background how do you, how are you choosing the colors for the background background is basically negative shape of a figure so by defining the negative shape positive shape comes out um, so um i used a uh, kind of very pale uh, uh turquoise i think um so and the Depends on the situation, but better to use neutral, bit, new, more neutral than figure. Yeah. So you don't you want don't it to want... be too saturated. 
No, no, then negative shape come forward, that doesn't make sense, yeah. So what's this next stage here that you're doing? Um, I did draw again with the cobalt blue um, pit pastel and uh, Prussian blue. Um, it's kind of a, the fixer, I called it the fixer. <laughs> kind of, you fix uh, your figure, yeah. So this is you going back to drawing, like you've added colour. Yeah, yeah. And now you need to kind of redefine the actual figure again. Yeah, of course you can use black or dark grey, whatever you feel right. Uh, I felt blue is the right colour for this. I often use the blue for that. Yeah. To define your edges a bit. Yeah, yeah. Push I guess that, is that important with soft pastel? Because soft pastel is quite chunky. You're not going to make really clearly defined shapes with it. Yeah. So that's yeah. why you're going back to. Yeah. Yeah. You can sharpen, but then you waste lots of uh, pigment. So it's better to use a pastel pencil. What's happening here in this last stage? Yeah, I, I thought I, I would finish at the stage, last stage. Then I saw my drawing, and I felt drawing is a bit too quiet and too proper i felt but the, this model has a very healthy vitality and the, you know radiate his vitality radiates from uh, that the photo and i saw that i need some other more kind of happy bright color so i picked up quite a strong pink then i gave a, a bit of a blood in drawing yeah so if someone was doing a realistic painting, like just based on realism, the colour choices would obviously be different. You wouldn't choose that particular blue, you know, you wouldn't choose these colours. But this is you, this is, when I see one of your drawings, it's instantly I know it's you, mostly because of the way that you use colour. And that's such a personal thing for you, but even you make sure that the values are, the relationships between them are roughly right, so that I can see that part's darker than that part. But then within that, it's a lot of your personality goes into choosing the colours. Um, I think the most important thing is to believe in what you see. Yeah. And uh, if you see a bit of violet or purple, just go for it. Yeah. But, um, you have to be absolutely honest. You, you can't just make up, oh, purple might be nice. And <laughs> you, you see it, yeah? But when we see colour, we are very easily influenced by preconception. It's like a form, you know, how people look like and uh, how people's nose look like, that kind of thing. The same thing happened to colour as well. So you have to be very, very observant, and uh, once you saw Kara, that's what you saw. So that's it. So you gave me the example before of a green field. Like we think a field is green, so when you go and paint a field, you get out some green. But you said that when you actually look at a field, it's not just green, it's, there's yellows and blues and all kinds of stuff happening. And the thing is, if we just say to people, just go with your feeling and stuff like that, it's going to be really, really hard. Because what you need to do, I think what you need to do first is train up your eyes to see what's happening more and more. And then you can start to be more playful and intuitive with your use of colour. So over the next few weeks, we'll be putting out a series of videos with more technical stuff about what happens with colour. So what's happening with light? How does light reflect off different surfaces? What happens in shadows? Um, and then what we're going to do is train our eyes to see more and more colour. And then eventually we'll then be able to apply that to drawings and paintings. And then I think you can start to play around and become more intuitive with it. Do you want to say anything else to everybody in lockdown? Um, just take care of yourself and uh, keep drawing.
So there's going to be another of our videos somewhere on the screen which YouTube thinks you will like. So if they get it right, check it out and I'll see you over there.